Is our privacy being threatened? And the Fed does it again. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line here on Super Bowl Sunday. And of course, we'll have our selection for the Super Bowl and our commentary later in the day. But again, one of the big questions we have to ask is, is our privacy being threatened? There was reports over the weekend that some of these DNA places that you send in your DNA to find out your, your background and all the other stuff, is actually sharing some of that information with the FBI and some other uh, police agencies. And I guess I, I guess the question is, is our privacy being threatened? And of course, you know, we, we continue to sign over our, our, our freedoms and all in, in, in good name. And I think that that becomes another issue. I, again, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not really interested in sharing my privacies. Uh, again, I, I think that this is one of the issues that we have to look into. And of course, the more that we get technology, the easier it is to spy on us. I mean, if you remember the movie uh, Enemy of the State, you know, pretty, some pretty interesting things. And of course, that movie was, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. So again, I, I'm just w- wondering, are we giving up too much of our privacy? Of course, one of the big issues is that we willingly give it up to other people. And I think that that was, that's one of the cases <laughs> for Facebook. That's one of the cases for all these other places. I mean, if you're going to willingly give over your information, then you can't expect privacy. And I think that's something that is, is a problem. And I think it's something, you know, this will be, to be continued later. But of course, again, I would be very careful giving away anything because again, all it does is give uh, give them a bigger dossier of, of who you are and, and, and what you do and what and and it, it makes to me it seems to be a little problem okay so again that, that's certainly up to you but uh, certainly you know I, I don't want people crawling up my you know what so in the meantime uh, of course the the Fed does it again you know the Fed is a great the Fed maybe should take their show to Las Vegas you know they could be maybe the greatest magic act in history, because what what did we see last week? You saw a, a a what we thought was a normal Fed chair a year ago, okay, who came in from the business world, came in from the investing world, and 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 had an understanding of what needed to be done in in the in the in the economy, and all of a sudden, magically, he went from a normal person. He was a normal either hawk or dove, depending on the circumstances, immediately turned over to a dove. So magically, we saw somebody turn from a true business person to totally a dove to to, to let the markets continue to feed off of cheap money and free money where they're going to stop their their their, their paying back of the balance sheet, reducing their balance sheet. They're going to, they're saying they're not going to raise rates. Now that begs the question, okay, are they going to be able to continue to control that? Now, of course, we've seen manipulation since 1913. So we're at 106 years in just about with the, the Federal Reserve that is run by the bankers. And it's, isn't it amazing how the bankers always get bailed out in the times of trouble? Okay, maybe is that anything to do with this private corporation or this so-called private corporation, which was intentionally named the Federal Reserve to 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 fool the average person? Because many people do not know that the Fed is private, is not part of the government. Of course, they get plenty much manipulation from the government. But once again, Chair Paul made it clear that well, he's not going to raise rates now. So he went from raising. Which, again, I asked the question, okay, is this economy not strong enough to raise rates? Okay. I mean, from a pure jobs, we had a we had 304,000 jobs on Friday. Okay. An unbelievable number. Unemployment ticked up to 4%, but that was partially because of the government shutdown. Okay. But basically, you had 304,000 jobs. You had a, a, a hike in wages. Okay. Now, again, I think wages still need to go higher, 
but they will that will that will work out through the supply demand channel. Okay, again, wages will work out when when there's obviously right now we've got more jobs available than people to fill them. So what's it going to take? It's going to take higher wages, and that will happen. We're already seeing this all over the place. So when we look at it, okay, we know that wages will continue to rise. We saw a, a big boost in construction jobs. So when you look at it, we know wages are going to rise. But why is the Fed sitting back and doing nothing? Why are they, they succumbing to the pressure of Wall Street and the pressure of the politicians that say, well, it's not good? Well, I don't know. I remember that we had a very ex exploding economy when interest rates were 5 6 7 8%. I think my first mortgage might have been 10%. Okay? And somehow I felt like I made more money then than I am now. So this is again to me is more manipulation and more trying to control the currency and control everything else that goes along with it versus having the economy and free markets decide what they're going to do. And, and this is, again, you know, we talked about this. You can only kick the can down the road so far. Eventually, the road ends. But we're not seeing, in my opinion, a true free market. And I think that is one of the issues that we have here. And, and of course, I, I think that when you look at how this all lays out, it only benefits the big banks when it's all said and done. It only benefits the big money. It does not benefit the middle class is to to the monetary policy. Yes, it helps your 401k if they can maintain it. But we've all seen this movie before. We know that it can't be maintained. And it's not an issue, okay, of whether or not you're going to be able to survive, okay? Because if you just if you just stayed in, then you would be fine, okay, with your 401ks. But of course, we all get emotional when that comes down to that time and the markets are collapsing. You go, oh my God, this, this is the big one. Elizabeth, this is the big one. But that's the point. That's, that's why you have to lay the percentages of the markets over 150 years saying that, you know, it, it, it goes up 8% year over year. Okay. So not every year, but year over year. But again, I, I think that this is one of the issues and that, that's the real problem is the human emotion. And of course, I make a lot of calls on this recording. And of course, I, I, I get a lot of backlash on some of the calls I make, but I'm only playing what the patterns and what the market footprints tell me that they're going to do. And we have been long for, for quite a while now, okay, in this most recent run up from a short term. Why? Because the algorithms I use say that you should be long the market. Now, personally, do I agree that at 2,700 in the S&P, we should still be long? Maybe not, but I'm not going to fight. Again, this is one of the big things about being in the market and understanding how to use the disciplines to be part of the market, okay? And we'll talk about this more in the second half, but these are things that we have to worry about, okay? It's, it's not whether you enter the market or when you enter the market. It's what is your exit plan? You know, we did a very detailed uh, webinar on trading plans and being prepared because you need to be planned for different types of trading. Okay. If you're day trading, if you're swing trading, if you're investing, there's a different plan for each and everything that you do. Now, if anybody wants a copy of that, you can certainly email me at bub at bub at trading.com. I'll be happy to send you a, the trading plan webinar. I've got the recording. But in the meantime, again, what we're looking at here right now is a market that is totally under manipulative thumb of the Fed. And why should one man, one person, or 12 people, depending on how you want to look at it, but one person have all of that power when the free markets themselves will decide what an asset is worth, okay? Isn't that much simpler than having somebody tell me what it is? Because they have no idea. They are totally clueless about markets and about common sense. That's the issue that I see is they lack the capacity to be common sense about anything. So again, I often tell the story, and I've probably told it here before, but I could take them and drop them off in, the, in a field somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and they'd probably never find their way home, okay? So in the meantime, 
enough about the Fed. We know that they just continue to try to manipulate. You see they're trying to put pressure on the dollar, but yet the dollar hasn't really broken. Yes, it's come back down, but it has not really broken. But I, I think that, you know, we talk about this, I think, almost every week. The global debt continues to rise. You've got trouble in Italy. I mean, Italy is going to have its second lost year. You've got a, a, a big you got problem in the Eurozone. You've got problem with Brexit. You've got problem globally. Now, do you think, OK, that there won't be some contagion. Do you think that we are totally immune because we're the cleanest shirt and the dirty laundry as we want to talk about? Or is that is that trouble going to start to come this way? Now, again, if you're talking about a global economy, it's got to be. And it's got to work together. OK, you know, we're all dependent. But of course, you've got the central banks around the globe all trying to manipulate and you, listen, you've got Japan that's at 238% of debt to GDP, okay? You've got them, I think Japan owns about 60% of their stock market. You've got China doing the same. So everybody's doing the money printing. So what is the money printing really doing to you and me, okay? They're reducing the value of my own cash in my pocket, which is why you have to be invested, which is why you need to learn how to hedge so you can be invested in the market, okay? But I, I think that at the end of the day, OK, you've got issues that, again, when you take away the free market system, which they've done. So you, 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 you take the opportunity for markets to, to price and work themselves out. In the meantime, you know, there's talk about that Goldman may hold back some bonus money from their employees that were involved in the Malaysia deal. Now, does anybody think and I'm not accusing. OK, this is an opinion. OK, but does anybody think that this is the first time that Goldman has done something like that or any of these other big banks have done something like that. It's only a big deal when they get caught. Okay. That's the bottom line. Okay. Let's, let's, let's face it. Okay. Some of us may have done things in the past that we may not be so proud of. If we got away with it, great. If we didn't. Okay. But again, this is the whole thing. Okay. It's only an issue when they get caught. OK, it's not an issue until they get caught. So do we think that this is the first time? This is like the whale trade. This is like all those big BS stories that come out that require big fines that we always I have to ask, is that the first time it ever happened? And, and of course, I'm never a believer that that's the first time it ever happened. In the meantime, we're going to step out here for a break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horvitz will be right back with more after the break of Bubba's Bottom Line. Hey, everybody. Uh, if you'd like to continue to get our daily updates, now Bubba's Bottom Line will always be free. But if you want the daily updates, either via video or text or both, okay, you can get the videos, okay, my daily videos, which would, you'd go to bubbatrading.com forward slash video, okay. If you want text messages, you can go to bubbatrading.com forward slash SMS. And if you want them both, which is, uh, is what I recommend, and I'm having a great special on it right now. You can go to bubbatrading.com forward slash video SMS and you can get text because I text three or four times a day. And I do, of course, one video every day. So if you'd like to continue to receive the weekly, the daily updates, OK, you need to go there and sign up for it. Uh, it's a, I think it's we're offering a special. I think it's five forty nine for both per month. So five dollars and forty nine cents. Not bad for to, to, to get the list of me every day. In the meantime, Bubba's bottom line will always be free. And we are going to step back to the show right now. Let's get back to Bubba's bottom line. Welcome back to Bubba's bottom line. Todd Bubba Hor with you. And of course, it's always great to be here with you on Super Bowl Sunday. And of course, markets last week, another good week. You know, we continue to push up because of the we got the big gift from the Federal Reserve and uh, uh, equities rallied. Uh, they, you know, they, they struggled a little bit here and there. But basically, I think what you're going to see right now is you've got equity sitting at the top end of the range in consolidation. Certainly, again, as I mentioned earlier, we're still long. We have been long and said we thought 2,600 to 2,700. So we're at the upper end of the range. Now, there's no reason for us to sell and get short here, okay? Although there, there's times I might, for a day trade, look for a spot. But again, until the markets, until the footprint of the market says that it's time to turn over, we stay long, okay? Uh, now, there's a lot of indications that, again, we could see, I would expect to see the markets consolidate here. But I think you saw some very interesting things. You saw the 
Bond markets rallied big last week until Friday and came back, but you know, kind of can coincided with the Federal Reserve. Because just so you understand, when bond futures go up, interest rates go down. Okay, they work in an inverse relationship. So when I talk bond futures, bond futures higher, interest rates lower. Bond futures lower, interest rates higher. And I still believe that bond futures are going significantly lower. Okay, I think interest rates are going significantly higher. I, I think that we have a failure to communicate, okay? And I think the Fed, as much as they're gonna try to keep interest rates low, I think the free markets will take over the interest rate market because that is a very, very big market. I think we had some great action in gold last week as we have written on a daily basis for Kitco, since gold was at 1180, we're bullish gold, we're staying bullish gold, and I get emails all the time, do we sell? Do we? I, I'm not selling, I'm not interested in selling. Until gold breaks below, the next level right now support is 1300 to 1310. Until it gives me a close below 1300, I am not a seller. I am a buyer and I will continue to do so. I think gold has got a chance. It should get to 1350 in the next week or two and probably pull back. But again, I would think now we ha now have 1400 in play for gold. So we'll continue to watch gold and we'll continue to be buyers of gold until the pattern changes, but we're in a solid uptrend. We're getting into a bull market, okay? The oil markets, a little bit, again, you know how markets like to torment us, right? You gotta torture us, okay? And there's people that tell me that, that oil is going to $85 and God bless you. Again, listen, I try to respond back. That's what makes a market, okay? You're on the long side, I'm on the short side, and I'm staying on the short side. There's nothing that has changed in the oil markets except a little bit of manipulation. We've seen rig counts reduced because, of course, they're going to create demand. They want to empty out. But in the meantime, from a fundamental standpoint, and I don't trade fundamentals, but from a fundamental standpoint, we've got too much supply and the ability to have too much supply and, of course, not enough demand. And if the economy slows, which I believe it is going to, okay, I believe at some point in the next, you know, listen, I can't, it's, it's impossible to time it. But I think we should be worried about the potential recession that is coming. Okay, I think we should worry, be worried about some other things. You know, again, you cannot ignore the massive debt problem. You can't ignore the things that are going on around the globe. So again, excuse me. I think that that's going to create an overall problem. But in, when it comes to oil, I think we're at the top end. Again, could it go higher from here? Of course it could. And you know what'll happen? I'll take my losses and look for another entry, just like we did when oil ran up to 73 and we, we got out, we found a new spot to enter and we took it all the way down to 42, okay? So again, I, I urge you to understand how the market works before you rip open your mouth and start typing back ridiculous statements. I think you under, understand how a market works before and understand what we said earlier is that you need to understand where your exit is, where you're gonna exit the market if you are wrong because nobody's 100% right. It's a question of how you exit the trade to keep yourself in capital, in your inventory, in cash, so that you can always be playing into the market that gives you the best chance to be successful. In the meantime, grain markets popped up a little bit. Now we had some news out of China. I don't think the news in China was any big deal. Again, I'm gonna say this on record, okay? I think the China trade wars are priced in that they're gonna result, okay? now. You know, you had an announcement on Friday that, that China is going to buy a, a gazillion beans, okay? Well, beans actually sold off late in the day. Now, again, they may be up tomorrow. Again, we're bullish, the grain markets across the board, okay? We have not changed our stance here. We think grains are going a lot higher, okay? So we're going to continue to be buyers of grains on pullbacks as long as they stay in the ranges that they're trading. But soybeans tried to break out on an ascending view. They pulled back, which was a natural pullback. Corn and wheat kind of are just churning, but again, we're looking to be buyers. The same thing goes for the meats, okay? Feeder cattle, is we're using March, are stuck in a range 141 to 147 or so. Fats have broken up and made new highs, okay, and are pulling back. Natural, great trading action because that's what you want to see, okay? Remember, when a market is trending higher, you want to buy dips. When a market is trending lower, you want to sell rallies, okay? So that's what we're looking for. In the meantime, the only concern in the meats is the hogs, and the hogs are kind of ugly, okay? Again, we're, we're out. We took our bath and our beating and, and, and stepped out because we knew where our exit was going to be. 
And now we're looking for another place to enter. Now we're not going to enter the short side. We're looking for a place to enter the long side. But we will wait patiently until that time arises in which it's time for us to get back in. Again, I, I think this is one of the things you have to understand about markets. And of course, the dollar is right back down near that 95 level. Again, we're short the euro currency and we're long the dollar. Again, I, I think that's the right side to be on. We've been long the dollar since 88. It got up to 98. It's now pulling back to 95. I think that, again, that would be something that we would be considered, but we're looking for higher prices. And I, I think that, again, you have to understand that if, if the Fed had total control, the dollar would be a lot lower, and it really has not been able to, to, to crush the markets. Okay, So I think that when you look at what's going on here, corporate profits, you know, we've had earnings. And of course, everybody loves these earnings beats of less than expectations. Again, I always find that funny, right? Uh, you know, again, so you go out and you go out expecting a dollar. Okay, so you get a dollar twenty. Oh, I'm great. I'm happy. Of course, you should be getting five. But th that again, this is the goofy way that Wall Street works and that how they work markets overall. Okay, and of course, we, we have some potential market moving stuff this week. You've got. Uh, Trump in the State of the Union Tuesday night. Uh, now, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that he's going to focus on the wall. I'm going to guess that he's going to focus on China, on the trade wars. I don't think you'll hear much about banks or anything else because that's already pretty much already taken care of. Uh, so I think you'll see him his, him focus and kind of put the, the pedal to the metal on, on Pelosi and Schumer. And of course, Pelosi will be sitting right behind him. So it should be, it should be rather interesting. It should be an interesting even evening, but it could be a market driver depending on, on what he says. Okay. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to see uh, how this manipulated markets continue to work. We'll continue to watch everything. And of course we will update those each and every day as we, as we go. And we're going to step out here for a break and we'll come back with my commentary after the break. This is Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz will be right back. Hey, everybody. You know, again, as you know, uh, Bubba's Bottom Line comes out every Sunday and it's free. But starting tomorrow, or actually starting last week, but starting to, with tomorrow, only those who subscribe to the daily updates, which are my videos, which are Monday through Thursday, sometime during the trading day, I give you an idea of what I'm going to say, what I'm thinking. And if you'd like to get those, all you have to do, too, if you, if you want the video, go to BubbaTrain.com forward slash video. If you want the text messages, which I send out two to four text messages a day, you can go to BubbaTrading.com forward slash SMS. If you'd like to get the combination, which we're offering a special package, I think it's $549 for both. You can go to BubbaTrading.com forward slash video SMS. And of course, you get it all. And of course, they will be higher later, but this is our introductory rate. And of course, that will start with tomorrow. So there will be no, no more free updates during the week. In the meantime, let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line with me, Todd Bubba Horowitz. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you. And of course, commentary time as I do each and every week. I give you a little bit of what I'm thinking. Uh, so the big news of the week was that Washington, D.C. is going to turn into Starbucks <laughs> as Howard Schultz announced his presidency as an independent. And again, Again, I'm not a big fan of Howard Schultz, but I think Howard Schultz is a reasonable candidate. I, I, I believe. Listen, I believe that him and President Trump are very similar in their ways. I think they're both business guys, and I've said this all along that I believe that it takes a business guy to run the White House. So I, I think that Howard Schultz has shaken up the, the Democratic Party and their socialist views, and. You, you, can you imagine the outrage from the left of him wanting to run? Uh, now, again, I have to ask you this. A, do you think he could do a good job? I mean, here's a guy that came from poverty and turned himself into a billionaire. Again, I don't agree with his liberal politics on some of the things, but his fiscal, again, I think he's more of a libertarian type of a candidate. Okay, And unfortunately, we can't get them on every ballot, okay? And, and that, I think, is one of the things that's wrong with our political system. You have two choices, okay? Well, I don't want chocolate or vanilla. I want Jamocha almond fudge. I want a chance to have somebody else, and I think that is one of the bigger issues. 
Because, uh, you know, again, I think that we should all be somewhat fiscally conservative, but also have views. I, I think that you should have the rights to think what you want. Okay. Again, so I, I, I think this is always the thing, but I, I think Schultz is shaking, is shaking the tree here a little bit. Uh, and I think he will assure the re-election of President Trump, which would, wouldn't bother me one bit because I think President Trump is doing a solid job. Again, I know many of you don't agree, but that's fine. That, that's what makes show business. That's what makes, what makes a market. Uh, and I think Howard Schultz also has enough money to actually make a solid run at it. I think what you're going to really see here is how far left they want to go. And I think one of the issues here is how much the millennials buy into the far, far left. You know, I, I, I think that, you know, you listen to uh, Cortez and these others. I think they should, shouldn't they take a field trip to Venezuela to see what socialism really is about? You know, the United States, we have a lot of socialistic issues here to begin with, okay? So I, I think if we go any farther, I think the whole system falls apart. I think you end up with a revolution, and I think that was what's also helped with the birth of the cryptocurrencies, which have not been forming well recently, but I think there's some a more to that story, okay? But I think that I, I, one of the things I do agree with is this is America, and if Howard Schultz wants to run, God bless. I have no problem with it. I think that, again, I wouldn't have a problem to, based on, again, I don't like, I didn't like him taking out the Christmas cups and, you know, all that crap. But at the end of the day, I think he'd be okay. But in the meantime, I think that he's going to clear the way for a second term of Donald Trump. And to me, that would be just fine because I think that Donald Trump has done the right thing for the Americans and for the average people. The only thing that I, his only fault, I think, was interfering with the Federal Reserve. But again, I, I can't I, I can't argue uh, who someone who's cleared the way and created uh, these jobs and all the things that are going. So we'll see what happens with the election. In the meantime, we've got the Super Bowl tonight, okay? And the Super Bowl is going to be, it's a, it's a tough one. I think it's going to be the New England Patriots, the GOAT, Tom Brady, okay? I, I, that's, that's my prediction. Of course, this is not a huge play. I wouldn't get crazy with it, but it is, I think, the Patriots win it. That's the way I see it. This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bobowitz. Have a great trading day. <laughs> great trading day. How about a great rest of your weekend? Enjoy the Super Bowl. Enjoy the commercials. We'll see you back here tomorrow with Bubba's Daily Update. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.